Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. This video is an MDS video where I'll be going through all of the beauty products that I've used up in the months of January and February. And like always, I will put everything out on the floor and sort it into categories with you so that we can get a sneak peek into what we'll be talking about today. So let's just get started with that. with one tool. I never really know what category to put this in, but it's a beauty blender and I love this. This one in particular I've used for a very, very long time. The one I had before that lasted me over a year. I think this was the same. I have another one to replace it. For me, these last forever. They don't get gouges in them the way some more affordable sponges do. And so for me, they last a lot longer. And you can get them on sale if you wait. I think the last one I got for like $14, which isn't really that bad if it's something that you're using for a very long time. And I wash my sponge every time right before I use it, so I don't think the sanitation is much of an issue either. I know that there are so many other affordable options out there, and I've tried so many, but they all seem to get holes in them really fast some within only a month or so's time. And so that doesn't seem like a more affordable option for me if these ones last me forever. I have two lip balms here. They're both from NYX. It's the hashtag, this is everything lip loving balm. I really like these. And the reason I go through them usually two at a time is because I keep one by my bedside. I keep one in my backpack. I keep one at my vanity. These are great. I did purchase a couple more during the Black Friday sales last year. These are just a staple. I've been talking about these for years. I used up two mascaras. The first one was a mini of the Legendary Lashes Volume 2. I talked about this most recently in my 2021 Makeup Empties video because I had used up a mini of that one there too. I feel like this was just okay. The formula was just alright and the brush was a little bit too big and the bristles were too soft to make me feel like I could really push my lashes up. The Pillow Talk Push-Up Mascara from Charlotte Tilbury though, I really really like that one. And then this one, the Essence Lash Princess, this is a staple. I've gone through so many of these over the years. I think they're just a good standard mascara that I know kind of always works, but it's not really like something that wows me. It's really my favorite just because of the convenience and the price, and I just know it'll work versus the other mascaras that I'm testing out. I don't know how they're gonna work. I do have other brands out there that I'm interested in trying. I do like trying new mascaras on occasion, but I haven't found one that's like my perfect amazing mascara and so I sometimes just fall back on this one because it's reliable and I know it'll work. I finished a primer. It's the Too Faced Primed and Peachy Primer. I did cut it up so that I could get everything out of there. This is a travel size. I have two more travel sizes. After I finish those two travel sizes, I'm not sure what I'm going to do because I don't think that they sell this anymore. And then one product I just finished, I wore it for the last time today, and that is Ibiza Nights from Charlotte Tilbury. It's one of their lip lusters. I am so surprised how many uses I got out of here. I'm really eager to share that in a cost per use Instagram post. I compared this with another Charlotte Tilbury lip gloss and then with a Tower 28 lip gloss as well to see which one was the most cost effective. I really did think that this one would be the most expensive per use because it's the smallest packaging, but it really packs a punch. Like you don't need a lot. Every time you take the applicator out, there really isn't a lot of product on the doe foot. And I find that just using everything that's on that doe foot is enough for one application. I really did think with how small the doe foot and the packaging was that I'd have to probably dip in multiple times to do a full application, but that wasn't the case. I'm very pleasantly surprised. I likely wouldn't purchase this shade again because it does have glitter in it and that's not my favorite thing, but they do have some other really pretty shades. I think one of them is in Portobello Girl. It's like a milky pink color. I'd probably go for that one next. Now for skincare. I do have one hand cream. It's from Trader Joe's. It's the ultra moisturizing hand cream. I'm a bit torn because I loved this hand cream. This was very good. It was one of those thicker, maybe slightly more waxier hand creams, but it didn't leave a really weird residue on your hands. It was just very, very nourishing, really great for the winter, or if you washed your hands a lot or, you know, did a lot of dishes or did a lot of washing where your hands were just really dried out, this was really great for that. However, it comes in this like metal tube packaging and I found that once I got to the end of it, I would try to push product out and holes from throughout the rest of the packaging would squirt out cream in like other directions and <laughs> became quite a hassle to try to get everything out of here. I just, I don't feel like I got like as much out of here as I could have if it had just been a di in a different type of packaging. I do remember this being really affordable, which is great. And 
you know, 95% of the process of using this was fine, but once it got towards the end, it got really messy. I have a facial spray here. This is from Mario Badescu. It's the facial spray with aloe, aptogens, and coconut water. This is, I think, their newest fragrance that they have in their facial spray line. I really liked this. I liked it a lot more than the rose one, definitely more than the lavender one. I really do like the cucumber one, even though it is very heavily scented, and I try not to do that anymore with skincare. I do still prefer the Hylamide Sub Q mist. I just prefer this one a tiny bit more, but this was nice. I have a serum here. This is from Good Molecules. It's the Super Peptide Serum. I liked this. I enjoyed the process of it, but I can't really say that it made a huge difference. Yeah, honestly, I've never used a serum that made a huge day and night difference in my skin. I do recall like a dermatologist that I follow on YouTube saying that peptides are really good for your skin. I don't know why that is. It says it targets fine lines, wrinkles, and dullness. That sounds fine, sounds nice. So maybe it's just one of those things where I'm trying to put something nice on my skin to like help it long term, but just using a bottle of it isn't really gonna give me like a huge day and night difference. I am using the niacinamide one now and I've only used it one time. I do have a question about the niacinamide serum though because I used it for the first time a couple days ago and the next day, uh, the outer portion, like the borders of my lips became really inflamed and now my lips are like really they're very swollen and they're in pain and they're super dry and I just feel tight and I'm not sure what I did. I don't know if I ate something that maybe I'm having a weird reaction to or I, I don't know what it could have been. I don't know what I've done wrong. I feel like the only thing that's really changed is I used this one up so I started using the niacinamide one and maybe I'm not supposed to get that near my lips. Hopefully it's something else and hopefully it goes away really fast. I have a face cream from e.l.f. This is the Holy Hydration. I think this is one that my husband used up because he also really likes using these. They're a really great fragrance-free, good quality cream at the drugstore, and if you wait for e.l.f. to have their half-off website sales, you can get this for an even better deal. Same with the e.l.f. Daily Face Cleanser. My husband and I both use this. It's super cheap. I get it for like $2 when it's on sale. It's a good quality cleanser and it's a staple. I feel like I, I talk about at least one of these in every empties video. One product I didn't love as much is this Daily Dissolve Cleansing Balm from Versed. I, number one, didn't like that it was scented. It says it has eucalyptus in it, eucalyptus oil and vitamin E, which is something I don't wanna like be rubbing into my eyeballs, which is what I do whenever I use a cleansing balm. So yeah, it had a very strong smell, which I didn't love and also, I found that this didn't fully emulsify the way other cleansing balms do. Typically, the cleansing balms I use and the cleansing oils, I can get all the makeup off, kind of dissolve all the makeup, and then I can rinse it with water and it'll turn into like a milky substance and then um, wash off clean. I don't feel like this did that and also, um, usually I shower at night and I'll put the cleansing balm and use it to remove my makeup and then I'll jump in the shower and just rinse it off in there. And this left a weird film in my shower to the point where it was like slippery to get in and out. That was super annoying. I remember I think Sarah Rose had a similar experience with this and she said that if you wet your hands first and then use that to kind of go in and keep rubbing a little bit longer just to further break up the product and then rinse, it will rinse a little bit more cleanly. But even when I did that, I could still feel like an oily residue on my skin. I just don't really like that and there's so many other cleansing balms that don't do that and also this is like 17 or 18 dollars no not gonna buy this again okay so a couple hair staples products that I've talked about multiple times that I love and there's a reason why I have them in almost every empties video they are three conditioners one is from desert essence it's the Italian red grape conditioner the other one is the Pacifica banana love and the last one is the Garnier whole blends repairing conditioner this one smells like honey love it. Again, <laughs> how many times have I referenced Sarah Rose in today's video? Anyway, she tried this. I think she may have tried it based on my recommendation and she really loved it and she mentioned how the scent lingers and I agree. My husband likes to use it too and every time he use it, uses it, I can tell. Big fan will definitely repurchase this. Uh, one that I probably wouldn't repurchase is this Garnier Fructis Sleek and Shine conditioner. I remember using this as a teenager 
and really liking it. And I do really like the way it smells. And it also has that element of nostalgia because I do remember using it when I was younger. But I don't find that this is very nourishing. Definitely not as nourishing as the Honey Blends one. So I probably wouldn't repurchase this again. But if for some reason I was like stranded and I needed hair conditioner and there wasn't a lot of things available, I would get this. I just, I know that there are other things that I prefer. This one here from Aloe Botanica, it's the Mega Moisture Shampoo. It's the coconut milk version. This is a giant bottle that I got at Costco. So it is nice that they sell it in bulk. If you do like this brand, you can get it in bulk at Costco. I found this to be a bit drying. It smelled nice, um, but yeah, it was just a bit drying. So I probably wouldn't get it again. And then I have two conditioners. This first one is a purple conditioner from Kristen S. I mentioned, I think in my most recent empties video, how much I hated the signature shampoo and conditioner. And then I think one of their reconstruction masks as well. I had a little sampler kit and pretty much every product in there except for the dry shampoo spray was horrible and I hated it. It dried my hair out, made it feel like straw, but I loved the scent. I really like the Kristen S scent. And so I did have the purple shampoo and conditioner and I went through the conditioner first. I haven't finished the, the shampoo yet. And this was nice. It definitely was um, tinted dark purple enough to have a toning reaction on my hair. And it does smell like the other Kristen S products, which I do really like, so I like that scent. It doesn't smell like bubble gum, like most purple shampoo and conditioners smell. There are several other purple conditioners out there that I'd like to try. My favorite is the one from Pravana, their mask. They have a, a really good mask that's like amazing at toning, and it smells nice, and it's just really good quality. This one isn't as moisturizing as that one, but it is good. If you're looking for like a simple everyday type of purple conditioner, I definitely recommend trying this one out. But this one here from Cake, I wouldn't recommend trying out. This is the Whip Smart So Many Ways Hair Mask. And it says that you can use it in a bunch of different ways, but I just used it as a hair conditioner slash hair mask. And typically when I apply conditioner, I wash my hair first when I get in the shower, and then I put conditioner in the ends, and then I kind of put my hair back into like a little bun, and then I do the rest of my shower, and then I rinse my hair out at, as the last step. And even if I did that with this, I don't feel like it really gave me a lot of moisture. It does smell like cake or cookies. It smells really sweet, which I thought I would love, but I am learning that, uh, especially with the cake products, I don't love shampoos and conditioners and soaps that are super sweet smelling because something about that mixture of the soap smell and the sweet smell together just puts me off. So the scent ended up being something I didn't like even though I purchased it because I thought I would like the scent and I was excited to try some more things from Cake Beauty because I love their dry shampoo powder. Anyway, yeah, this was underwhelming. I don't think it was that great and I wouldn't buy it again. Right, so those are all of the products I used up in the last two months. Typically I do empties videos quarterly or I was going to start doing them quarterly. However, we are moving very soon and I didn't want to hold on to these and move them only to do the video like a month from now. So I do imagine that my next empties video will be at the halfway mark just so I can get back on track of that quarterly update. I hope you enjoyed watching my empties video but in the meantime that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.